Hello again everybody. So today I have another video for you and it's a new project. So is it a project of something I have under a tarp? Actually no, those are my winterized bikes. So I guess it's going to be one of these two bikes is my new winter project. Actually no, it's not. I have not covered these up because there's still a good shot I could ride them in uh, Texas in the winter months so you know I'll uh, continue to start them up and run them you know every couple days or so just to uh, keep them up to date but neither one of these bikes are the winter project so if they're not these two bikes then what is it and actually what I went ahead and did was I went and bought another bike let me introduce you to my 1989 Elite E. Unbelievable, bought another bike. But I just couldn't pass it up. It was a great deal. And I had to get it. So it's the first time I've uh, actually seen one of these in person since I was 15 years old. Um, a buddy of mine in 1988... He bought a black version of this, and I'll never forget when he got it, just to tell you this quick story. So he had a red spree, and me and my other buddy, we both went out and bought the 87 Elite 50, which uh, I've showed in my other videos. And that whole summer when we were 14, he was always kind of jealous of what we had. I mean, it wasn't a big deal to us. We just bought what we wanted. And he actually had a spree when he was 13 the whole year before us. But he went to his dad, and they were, uh, you know, a wealthy type family, I guess you could say. More than mine, anyway. And uh, his dad took us, me and him, and uh, his dad went up to Honda, and he ended up buying one of these Elite E's. And I remember standing there and looking at this, thinking, you know, I'm not going to say his name out loud, but saying, you know, that's not better than the... Uh, Elite 50. The SC50 is better than this. I mean, I remember thinking right away that it looked like a Spree. You know, the front end looked like a Spree. And the engine, it just looked like it had some different panels on it. And that's exactly what Honda did. Was they took the engine, they took the front end. It's pretty much a Spree with some different panels on it. So, I remember him getting it done. I'm, I'm, I'm telling him, I said, you know... Look at the front end of the SC50. Look at it. It's better quality. And then, you know, the thing that really topped it for me was this fuel gauge on the back. I thought, how stupid is that? And I actually still feel that way. Don't know what Honda was thinking to put a fuel gauge on the back when they could have just put it like all their other bikes in the cluster. This one, by the way, does have 2,340 miles. So, you know, it was just something, it was one of those bikes that I remembered really, really well from my childhood. I remember seeing it. They sold a lot of these in black. That was the color that you found the most often. And then there was some in red too, but not as much. The actual Elite ES is the rarer uh, bike. That's one of the rarest bikes you're going to find. They didn't sell a lot of those at all. They were one-year models. But this Elite E was out from 88 to 90 so you could have bought it for three years and it was the bike that was supposed to take the place of the spree and it just never took off like the spree when you think about the numbers that the spree sold in 1986 alone they sold over a hundred thousand units and i think between all three years this was sold i think it was something like twelve thousand units for all three years put together so nowhere near the amount I might be a little off on that but but not much so getting back to this bike though I found it for sale and um, I've had it for a while now I just haven't uh, showed it to y'all until I was ready to clean up the other bike you know when I when I actually started on that other bike is when I found this bike and I'm like oh I'm gonna go and run and get that one and uh, I just didn't um, start on it I was doing one and you know one at a time and I wanted to uh, finish that one before I started on this one. I already started getting some parts together. I actually had that lens 
from an SA50. This one's all scratched up. So I figured I'll use that lens. I bought some new tires though. I bought a new air filter. There's no air filter in it. You know, I have a new petcock and uh, I also have some fuel and vacuum line to put on it. So same things I do on just about every bike. I'll take a look at the you know belt and everything once I open it up. But for the most part, the panels I give them a, you know a B minus. There are some problems. Not exactly sure why this uh, tie wrap is there, but I'll go through and I'll lightly sand these down and touch them up. Try to keep it as close as I can to this color pink and. You know, there's a couple of those that I'm going to have to repair. A couple of things that, like another one's right here where there's a crack. So the panels aren't perfect, but still, considering this bike, you know, you're talking 30 years. It's It's been, you know, probably half of that sitting in a garage just having things thrown at it. And uh, that it looks this decent after this long, that's a, an accomplishment as far as I'm concerned. So I'll make it all pretty again, just like my other bikes. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to do a full restoration video of everything on this. I may just because there aren't any of this bike, but I haven't decided yet. Today is just a video to show it to you, tell you kind of my history like I did. Um, I was actually looking for a spree, but you know, it's funny. These people, I keep finding these ads. This ridiculous price is $800 for a spree with no titles. Like, keep it. I mean, they made so many of those. Uh, if there's one thing I can tell you is just wait. You'll find one, maybe $450 or so. Fix it up like I fixed mine up. And then it makes it worth your while. I mean, if you're buying these bikes, you know, eight, $900, and then you got to transfer the title, there's no way in hell I'm going to pay $1,000 for a spree. So I wouldn't even pay that for this. Um, I'm not sure what this bike is worth, but at the end of the day, it was worth the 250 That's all I paid for it, 250 bucks. Now, it doesn't run right now. The starter goes over. The headlight doesn't come on. I bought a new battery for it, so I got my, you know, I'm sure I got to clean it all out. It was last tagged in 2013, so it hasn't ran in a while. It's got a little bit of rust on the rims. You know, everything that you find on these bikes for them, to sit because they're steel rims so you're gonna always find some surface rust my other videos I'm not going to show that again I showed you how to clean those up and you can repaint them make them look like brand new like my uh, SC50 that I just finished but what do you all think you know I'm uh, definitely excited to work on another bike and uh, come spring I got to sell a few of these I just I'm running out of room and I hate keeping my vehicle actually outside. So my main conveyance outside where, you know, my, my garage is just getting so full of these bikes. But I love them. I love them so much that uh, that's the reason I buy them and I put the love into them. But that's going to do it for today's video. If you uh, like my content, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up if you like my video. And... You know, let me know what you think. Uh, what uh, what are your thoughts? I love the comments, good or bad, or whatever you think I should do with it. I'd love to hear from you all. Please, you know, tell me to uh, part it out. Tell me to uh, sell it. I, I, I don't care what your thoughts are. Of course, I'm going to do what I want. I don't listen to anybody. But i like to hear what you all think and what you think I should do with it. So that'll do it for this video. I will see you all soon, and um, I'll uh, send out another video once I get a little bit of the work done on this. Thank you much for watching.